What's up you guys, it's Dr. Casal. Today I wanna to review the 2024 American Academy of Dermatology updated treatment guidelines for acne. It's been a little while since they've updated this treatment algorithm, so let's dive into it together and see if there are any major changes. So they've subdivided this treatment algorithm based on severity, so you have mild acne in one category and moderate to severe acne in another category. We'll talk about the mild first and then we'll go into moderate to severe. The mainstay of treatment for mild acne is topical therapies, and these are graded based on the level of evidence to support their use. So in the strongly recommend category, no big surprise here, we have topical retinoids, benzoyl peroxide, and topical antibiotics. It's recommended that topical antibiotics are not prescribed as monotherapy, meaning by themselves, because this can contribute to antibiotic resistance if used over time. So if any of those agents aren't working on their own, you can combine them together. So you could use, for example, like topical clindamycin with benzoyl peroxide. There's a, a drug called benzoclin that's commonly used. That's a combination of both of those together. You can also use topical retinoids of benzoyl peroxide, but I find this to be particularly harsh in a lot of patients. And so for that reason, I'll typically recommend like a salicylic acid wash with a topical retinoid and then possibly adding on a topical antibiotic. Next on the list, we have the conditionally recommended treatments. So these are not the strongly recommended treatments mentioned above. These are conditionally recommended. And these include the following, clascoterone, salicylic acid, and azelaic acid. So clascoterone, this goes by the name Levy. It's a topical androgen receptor blocker. So basically what it does is androgens in circulation from binding to sebaceous glands in the skin and causing the development of acne in the skin. Even though the data for it is pretty good, I haven't had many patients that have been on it come back and say this has been like life-changing for them. Maybe other dermatologists have had different experiences, but I haven't found it to be extremely useful thus far. Next, we have salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is one of my favorite ingredients. It's a lipophilic acid, meaning that it's fat-loving and can penetrate down deep into the pores and help to clear pores in a phenomenal way. It can be used as a wash or a leave-on product, both of which work phenomenally well. And I'll oftentimes combine salicylic acid wash with a topical retinoid for mild acne, that's usually my go-to treatment. And you don't have to worry about benzoyl peroxide bleaching all of your towels and sheets and pillowcases. Last but not least, we have azelaic acid on this list. Do not sleep on azelaic acid. It's a phenomenal ingredient. It's gentle enough to use on sensitive skin. So if you have rosacea, you can use azelaic acid. It's great for acne and it's awesome for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So if you're treating acne and skin of color, you could treat both the acne and the hyperpigmentation with azelaic acid. And it's one of the only treatments that we use for acne that's safe to use when you're pregnant. So huge plus there. There is one brand called Dermatica that makes a 20% over-the-counter azelaic acid. If not, 20% is available by prescription. I believe the name is Azelex. And there are other over-the-counter ones that are pretty good. The Ordinary makes a good one, Naturium, and Paula's Choice, I believe, all make solid azelaic acid products. Next, we're going to kind of transition. Let's talk about the moderate to severe treatment of acne. This is broken down into categories as well. So we have systemic antibiotics, hormonal agents, and ice isotretinoin. Okay, so let's talk about systemic antibiotics first. So no shocker here, the most strongly recommended antibiotic by the AAD is doxycycline, good old vitamin D as we refer to in dermatology. Doxycycline is a phenomenal medication to treat acne. It kills the acne causing bacteria and helps to decrease inflammation all in one fell swoop. The things to remember about doxycycline is that it causes sensitivity to the sun. So you really have to stay out of the sun while you're on it and always take it with food because it could cause a really bad upset stomach. That's the only strongly recommended antibiotic that can Additionally recommended antibiotics are mainly other tetracyclines in the same family. So minocycline is another one that's used. It's not used as often because it can cause pigment abnormalities and a couple other autoimmune diseases. So we typically don't like minocycline over doxycycline for that exact reason. Another conditionally recommended antibiotic is sericycline, which is a newer generation tetracycline. And then the last thing on this list, it says doxycycline is preferred over azithromycin. So some patients can't take doxycycline because they're allergic to it or for whatever other reason. And in that case, sometimes we'll use azithromycin dosed about every other day. Doxycycline is still preferred, but if they can't take doxycycline, azithromycin is an option. Next, we have hormonal agents. This includes combined oral contraceptives or birth control pills. And how these work is basically, if you look at a graph and the x-axis is days of the month and the y-axis is hormones, you'll see the normal fluctuation of hormone levels throughout the month, which correlate with acne severity. When you have increased androgens floating in the bloodstream, they can bind to the receptors in the skin and cause the formation of acne pimples. Oral contraceptives pills kind of help to flatline hormone levels, which prevents the development of acne in people who are prone to hormonal acne. Next in this category is spironolactone. Spironolactone was developed as a potassium sparing diuretic for the treatment of blood pressure. And they found out later on that it actually blocks the androgen receptors, just like clascoterone that I've mentioned previously. So for that reason, spironolactone can be particularly helpful in people who are predisposed to hormonal acne. The biggest things to watch out for are possible changes in your blood pressure. Next in this category is intralesional corticosteroids. So corticosteroids 
steroids we use a bunch of in dermatology. They're potent, potent anti-inflammatory compounds. And for moderate to severe acne, if you have a large acne lesion, we can actually inject the acne lesion with corticosteroids, and that's gonna help to decrease inflammation and help it to shrink up a lot quicker. Caveat here being, make sure if you have this done, whoever's doing it is very, very highly trained in this. If done improperly, it can cause permanent scarring, it can cause atrophy of fat underneath the skin, and pigment changes. Last but not least in our categories, we have isotretinoin or Accutane. This is a vitamin A derivative. It works phenomenally well for the treatment of severe acne and can even help improve and prevent further acne scarring. Isotretinoin is a phenomenal and safe medication when used correctly. Always, always, always see your dermatologist if this is something that you want to discuss. It basically targets everything that causes acne. So it decreases oil production in the skin, decreases skin inflammation, decreases colonization with acne causing bacteria, and it helps the skin cells to grow normally like topical retinoids do. So isotretinoin is awesome. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what other skincare or dermatology topics that you want to see, and I'll do my best to cover them. Thank you guys.